All right, we are back and we are talking about export settings inside of Microsoft Fabric. This is the first part of four videos that we're doing, going to do in this topic uh, because there's a lot of export settings and sharings that we're going to be getting into. Uh, this is pretty important. Um, what settings you allow or more importantly, don't allow inside your organization. Please make sure you watch this video and, and reference the, the links down below in order to really understand a deep dive into each one of these. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, before we head to my laptop, if you find this useful, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share this with other people inside your organization. Uh, frankly, a lot of people don't know what these settings are or why you might want them on or off and people in your company may need to understand why you've made these decisions. So this should hopefully give you some good background and justification for why you have these things in place. And sharing this video might be a great way for you to share that with others inside your organization. All right. Now, uh, we are in the Fabric Admin Center again. Uh, we are talking about export sharing settings. The first item here is guest users can access Microsoft Fabric. Guest users who've been added to your Microsoft Entra directory can access Microsoft Fabric and Fabric items they have permission to. Now you can learn more about this, uh, link is down below, about what it means to be distributing content to guest users in a B2B relationship. But basically, do you want people to be able to access the content generally inside of Fabric? Now, I have a test organization in place, so I have it set to, yes, I'm gonna let everyone in the enterprise be able to do that because frankly, my tenant has no business critical information in it and uh, I use it for exper experimentation purposes. I don't want to be adjusting or impacting an experiment I'm doing with this, so I leave it open. You, on the other hand, you should have this set up to be an individual uh, security group that you, all, you add users into who are allowed to access this content. Uh, you don't wanna just leave this wide open to anyone and everything. All right, number two, users can invite guest users to collaborate through item sharing and permissions. Users can collaborate with people outside the organization by sharing fabric items with them and, and granting them permission to access those items. After sharing users accept an invitation, they're added to your enter directory as guest users. So again, I've got this enabled for everyone. Uh, I, I'm going to say that you want this restricted to some people within your organization who understand who should be or should not be allowed to share information to external users uh, to be able to work inside your content. Now, what does that mean? Uh, that, you know, again, the link is, this links through to this document or this link down below if you want to learn more about it. Um, but basically you're saying who's allowed to natively through the Power BI service, just add someone into your Entra guest ID user group. Now, um, uh, I guess I would, uh, honestly, I'd drive that through your AD groups and, and through the process over there. So really I would define this um, uh, outside of this space. I wouldn't just do it blindly. Now you may be in a smaller organization where you don't heavily leverage AD groups or Entra ID groups. I'd recommend you come up with a process for that. But if you're a small organization and you know, you're a hundred person shop and you're, you know, you've been around for 50 years and maybe in the next hundred, you might grow to 70 people. Maybe you just want to do it to a handful of people. Okay. Um, I think the, uh, the big challenge or the big advantage you get when you share this content is you can bring in a consultant or someone else who can access that information that stays on your domain, stays on your tenant, and they do the work there versus, hey, someone exports an Excel spreadsheet, ships that off to someone else, and then they do work with it in, you know, uh, out of your sight, out of your mind, out of the audit logs as to what you could see they're doing with it. At least in this case, you can see what they're doing. All right. Now, uh, guest users can browse and access Fabric content. Users can invite guest users to browse and request access to Fabric content. Uh, again, um, uh, this uh, links back over to the, actually this is the distrib yeah, distribute power, con power BI content to external guest users. A again, um, uh, this is 
if you're going to be allowing users inside your organization who can share to guest users, because you might want, like, there's two sides, right? Like, the first one is who can invite a, an extra person to become a guest user, right? And then this one is who can share to an already established guest user. Right, so if you have a list of guest users that are inside your domain, and you might do that to give someone access to like a team site because you're hosting teams meetings or something along those lines, right? Um, uh, those users will be guest users inside your tenant, and that may be perfectly fine. But you don't want just anyone inside your organization to be able to say, "Hey, uh, I've got this guest user. I'm I want to share them with this sense, share this sense of information with them." even if it's by accident, right? Uh, uh, so be aware that that is the, the other side of that coin, all right? Users can see guest users and lists of suggested people. Honestly, I think these two go together. Uh, with this setting on, users will see both users in your organization and guest users who have been added to your Microsoft Enter Directory and lists suggested people. Uh, with this setting off, users will only see users in your organization. Users can still share items with guests by providing their full email address. Uh, again, that is the, the con controlled up on uh, up on top is to who can share stuff. Uh, this is like, can you natively see them in the drop downs as you type in a name? Uh, so if you invited me into your organization, you know this would this would allow you to like type in uh, share to Chris Wagner inside of a fabric item and you'd share it to him. All right. Again, I have this enabled because I have it set up for my entire organization, not to everyone. So um, again, might be something you, you really want to restrict that down to a group of people who are allowed to see this and distribute it. And again, if you create one AD group for who's allowed to do these things, you just put that one AD group into like, okay, this specific security group can go ahead and make those changes uh, and then you're, you're good to go. All right, I'll cancel out of that for now. Oops, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. All right, here is the big one. For most organizations, this is your first thing that you're going to be turning off by default inside of Power, your Fabric service or inside of Power BI. Uh, this is a publish to web. What this does is it makes it possible for people to share a report out onto a website so people can come, you know, like just access that data from anywhere. Now, this is a little, this is a dangerous feature, especially if you have PII or PHI information, you have to be very careful with this. Typically speaking, I like to have this disabled inside of your most organizations. That is the baseline recommendation, at least until you have some like advanced training and some advanced sign offs on like how you'd work and operate with this. Now, if you're a small organization or you're like an independent you know, like contractor and you're trying to build out a portfolio, publishing to web is a great way to show your Power BI or, or Fabric Chops uh, that you can actually like build out content and share that to everyone, all right? Now, how is that done? Well, that is done through uh, the publish to web feature. There's a link down below where you can go and see how that works and operates. Uh, basically, you end up creating an embed token that allows you to like embed it into uh, different content that you're sharing. In this case, you can see I've got stuff that that's embedded from my report name and uh, or from reports as well as in my share to web space. I'm a big fan of having a singular share to web uh, a location where your, your workspace that you shared stuff out so that you can just see easily the items that are shared. Uh, clearly that evolved over time. I didn't have that standard uh, before, so I do need to go back and clean up. And you know what? That is part of life is going through and cleaning up as these new settings come in play and best practices come to light. All right. Next, next setting. Copy and paste visuals. Again, this is something that some organizations don't want because they want, if it's in the service, they want to keep it there. Uh, but it's the type of thing that, like, unless you have a block on, like, screenshotting and you've got something to prevent, like, people taking pictures of screens, uh, generally speaking, this is something that you would want to enable inside your organization so people could see data in, in Power BI, they can click on it, they can copy it, and then they can paste it into other applications. That reduces the, 
you know, the need for like typing stuff out and transposition and like just data entry issues. So, um, well, there's some restrictions and like, if you're like in the military or in some financial organizations, uh, this might be discouraged or, you know, at least controlled as to who's allowed to do that. Um, generally speaking, this is a relatively safe item to have enabled inside your organization. Um, and honestly, even inside of like more secure informations, you'd want to enable it for a security group and it would be like all of your analysts and all of your business users and anyone who works in on the business side of the house. And maybe you just uh, omit it from frontline workers or people who could be logged into systems that had the potential of uh, being uh, visible or accessible by the public. So uh, maybe you, you restrict it like that, but honestly, I'd use other restrictions there. All right, export to Excel. Now, this is a controversial uh, setting. A lot of people, especially when Power BI first rolled out, there was, uh, you know, there were really kind of two camps, right? Um, uh, yes, allow exporting for everyone. And, and it's, of course, We'd, we'd allow that exporting um, because we, you know, the, you know, Power BI is a mechanism to deliver data to people so that they could just, you know, export it, do whatever they need to it. The other side, it, you know, kind of fell into two arguments. One argument is no, I want people using and consuming the information as I provided it with the insights and the, the information that is visible to them. And I want them going through and looking for alternative insights that may or may not be relevant. Uh, and that because they may or may not understand the data, it may appear to be one thing, uh, but because models are complex and potentially challenging, maybe it's not showing them what they think. And we don't want them to just by default. Um, in fact, as a blanket statement, I don't want anyone to export it. Uh, and then the other side is I don't want people who might, who, who might have access to privileged information. I don't want to run the risk of them exporting it and, and then doing something uh, uh, untoward with it. So for example, a sales guy exporting and extracting out a client list or something along those lines and then taking it on to another job or another position, right? So you may want to have those restrictions in, in place for a group of people inside your organization. Not everyone, but it's, it's something that, you know, you might want to uh, like restrict. I'm of the mind that uh, my recommendations are enable it. You're going to need to have other control mechanisms in place because frankly, if people want to get access to information and data, they will find a way. Um, now the question is how easy it is, is I, I guess where the, the big thing comes into place, but by and far the, the guidance here should be enable this for everyone in your organization, just because there's a lot of inherent value that this, uh, that this brings. And then the last one that we're going to be covering today is export to CSV. Users in this organization can export data from uh, title, visualization, or pageant reports to a CSV file. This is enabled, um, honestly. Uh, so there's some there are some sub settings out here about like uh, what this means when it comes to exporting information, especially around sensitivity labels. Now, if you export information from uh, out into a trackable environment. So like if you extract stuff to, from Power BI to Excel, PDF files, PowerPoint files, Power BI, Power BI is automatically gonna attach a sensitivity label to it. So you can track and follow, you know, if there's sensitive information in it. CSVs on the other hand is a open source for, file format. There's no mechanism to attach a label onto that file and really protect it like we can with these proprietary formatted files. So uh, the reason why you might enable this uh, is because you want to, you want to push people into if they're going to export, you want them to push them into exporting to CSV so you can maintain those um, file layouts that are specific. Now note, this is uh, I believe this is a requirement for paginated reports. This could really break your under you know your your paginated reports. I think. Uh, so be careful with this one. If you're going to disable this one, this has some gotchas to it. You should be aware of. All right. So uh, those are this, this set of settings. Uh, there's going to be four or three more parts of this four part series on export import settings. 
Uh, do check those out. Please, if you have questions, comments about any of the things that I covered today, leave a comment down below. Uh, share this inside your organization. You have a great day. Peace. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.